In a recently overrun army base in northern Afghanistan, Taliban show off captured heavy weapons and ammunition. CNN cannot verify the authenticity of the videos or the date they were filmed. And Afghan security officials could not confirm or deny Taliban claims in these videos to CNN. But they do admit to losing dozens of towns in the past fortnight. The Taliban claim 90 such victories in the past month. The UN says it's less. 50 of 370 gone, but still very concerning. Most districts that have been taken surround provincial capitals, suggesting that the Taliban are positioning themselves to try and take these capitals once foreign forces are fully withdrawn. At times, the Taliban claiming wins without firing a shot. In Tahir province, a whole column of up-armoured American-made Afghan army Humvees are surrendered by government soldiers to the Taliban. The soldiers dump their guns in a pile, a valuable boost for the Taliban, who are fighting hundreds of miles from their heartland in the south and east. Afghan government officials say they are sending reinforcements to take back control and claim without proof to have killed hundreds of Taliban. The Taliban offensive appears to take advantage of the US and NATO drawdown, limiting air support for Afghan troops on the ground and raises questions about their intent at peace talks in Doha with the Afghan government. It's also significant that they're attacking the north. I covered the Afghan conflict in the 90s when the Taliban were fighting their way up the country. It took them years to get up to the north. This will send a very chilling message to Afghans. The Taliban surge, also a concern for US forces, who agreed their own ceasefire with the Taliban as they exit their longest war, but hoped they might leave the country at peace. Every day, the situation in Afghanistan changes as uh, the Taliban continue to, um, to uh, conduct these attacks um, uh, and to, to raid district centers, as well as the violence, which is still too high. On Friday, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani meets President Biden, with final U.S. forces more than half gone. Hard to see an easy reverse to the Taliban's gains. Nick Robertson, CNN, London. Well, in a recent CNN op-ed, my next guest writes, Afghan women turned their burqas into a tool for feminist activism, showing the world what was happening and hoping the world would respond. Lina Abirafe now joins me. She's the executive director of the Arab Institute for Women at the Lebanese American University. And Lena, I spoke with one prominent woman in Afghanistan, or, or she's actually in Doha, but from Afghanistan, a former member of parliament and one of only four on the Afghan government's negotiating team with the uh, Taliban in Doha at present. Have a listen to what Fatzia Kufi told me. I think I can be very frank on this. I feel betrayal because being an ally for 20 years, being in the full front of uh, you know, promoting the common principle values of human rights, of democracy, of education, of the things that people of Afghanistan very well deserve. Being as, uh, you know, the portrait of an achievement for the international community in Afghanistan, now when the international community withdraw, they do not even consult women of Afghanistan. She feels, Lena, betrayed. Your response? Thank you. I think Fauzia Kufi's sentiments are echoed across Afghanistan. After two decades and America's longest war and so much rhetoric to liberate Afghan women, it's worth asking them if that liberation has in fact been achieved. And I think they would argue that it hasn't. There's been a backsliding in terms of gains made and Afghan women are holding their breath. They're really resting on very precarious ground. At the same time, they have been actively liberating themselves since the very beginning. They've been working on this since mm. before we arrived. They'll continue to do so after we leave. But what we owe them is a better response, greater support, and to fulfill the commitments mm. that we made to them in the very beginning of the intervention. Look, we all know what the Taliban's approach 
towards women and women's education is. As my colleague Nick was just reporting, the, the group is gaining more control, particularly in the north of the country. Just how concerned are you that should they take over uh, a, a, a large swathe of the country and grow stronger, what the impact might be for the women of Afghanistan? Already the impact is very serious. We've seen greater human rights violations, mm. more school closures, increased violence against women. The World Economic Forum reports that Afghanistan is the worst place to be a woman. That's not for nothing. It's quite serious. Even though there mm. have been some gains made with children in school, we still have two thirds of girls who are out of school. With women's literacy, for instance, there have been improvements, but 70% of Afghan women and girls still can't read or write. And for me, the most alarming situation is violence against women. That is increasing. 80%, if not more, women, Afghan women and girls, have experienced abuse, many in the home. Women's security in the home is a reflection of the security in the country. And if women can't be safe at home, mm. they're not safe at all. And if women are not safe, then no one is safe. They should be the barometer by which the entire intervention is judged. When I lived there, I spent four years working very closely with Afghan women. And what I saw was a lot of strength and resilience and courage and the ability to speak out and strong voices. But are we listening? Do they have a microphone? Are we doing everything mm. we can to mm. amplify the work that they're already doing? And of course, Fazia involved um, in these peace talks, these stall talks with the Taliban. Um, she continues, of course, to play a, a significant role and will do in anything, uh, any, any future for those talks, wherever they might be. Um, but ultimately, how concerned are you uh, that these talks are stalled? It seems, at least for the time being, the Taliban isn't going anywhere. Well, I've worked in conflict contexts worldwide. And what I've seen is if women are not engaged in every aspect of the peace process, it's a peace mm. on shaky ground. When women are involved, that peace is better, stronger, and lasts longer. And we've seen that absolutely everywhere. And if Afghan women are saying that they are not involved or engaged or comfortable with the way things have happened, then that is a very shaky peace. So I, in fact, am quite worried. President Biden has said that the American withdrawal from Afghanistan is justifiable because he says forces have made certain that Afghanistan cannot again become a base for foreign jihadists to plot against the West. That withdrawal, he says, will be complete by September the 11th, 2021, which, of course, is a very symbolic day. It would be uh, the anniversary, uh, the 20 year anniversary of the, the falling of the Twin Towers, uh, blamed, of course, uh, on, on Al Qaeda, who were being harbored by uh, the Taliban in Afghanistan. Do you agree with that assessment? You know enough about what's going on in Afghanistan. Do you agree that this withdrawal is right, justifiable, responsible at this point? I think there's a risk of a leadership vacuum and it could jeopardize the gains that have been made for women. O the occupation eventually has to end. But what I would hope to see is a responsible end, mm. an accountable end, and one that is accountable in particular to Afghan women. And if women, like I said, are not engaged, there is no possibility mm. of peace in the country. They are the ones that have been actively working for it. They have been fighting battles, running schools, risking their own lives to educate their girls. They've shown us the abuses of the Taliban. So they're the ones who really need to be leading this peace. And I think it will be more sustainable Fatsia, and more meaningful yes. if they do so. Yeah. Fatsia yesterday when, when I was speaking to her said that she is so disappointed. She was effectively, she felt that, 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 that the Americans in withdrawing would certainly at least use their leverage to ensure uh, that there was some sort of peace process still ongoing, as it were, and that the, the Americans were really pushed to ensure some, some prospects for peace and stability, particularly for women, going forward. Do you share her disappointment, uh, her sense of betrayal? I absolutely share her concerns. And what I think mm. is important is that we, we should be funding the very organizations that are working on the ground, the Afghan women's groups, the Afghan feminists, the frontline workers, 
who have been leading the charge for change since the beginning. And if they're the ones saying they're not involved, they're afraid, they don't have the tools and resources to advance, they're worried about gains lost, they're worried about losing fundamental freedoms and rights, that is a concern. And that raises an alarm for me. And that's the voice we should listen to. Mm. Mm. Lena, with that, we leave it there. We thank you very much indeed for joining us.